well, I show you here at my writing desk a very, very funny terracotta from the late 2nd, 3rd century AD, which is actually rare. Roman terracottas of this quality are really not common. And that's why I bought her at the time. She comes from a jeweler's collect collection in New York, which was uh, Jacqueline Mazar. And it's such a sharp, neat mold from which it was made. And the lady has a character. She's not, uh, you know, she looks like a rather pompous Castafiore uh, aunt, not very agreeable, with beautiful hair, her expression pretty arrogant, and you can virtually hear her telling in a high voice to behave. So she's fun and has a strong character, typical clay from Alexandria and in a wonderful condition. It's rare to have from this period such a good terracotta. Here I'm sitting with a very elegant attic white Grand Lekitos in front of me, around 450 BC, of very, very elegant quality. Not only is the shape beautiful, but the painting on it has a quality of an old master drawing from the Renaissance. The scene is most intimate. On these white grand lekitoi, which were made exclusively for the funerary purpose, they show very often a scene between uh, the deceased person and the remain and the uh, surviving family. So what you have here is actually a very intimate scene of giving a, a sacrifice to the tomb and at this moment the deceased person, in this case a young Attic warrior with the Pilos helmet, very elegantly with the Chlamus, the, the, the shoulder mantle, saying goodbye to his wife, obviously, who is bringing uh, laurel wreaths and the box. It's a most intimate drawing which is perfect for the collector who likes to take from time to time a piece and have an intimate experience, like with coins, with this work of art of an extraordinary high quality in detail. This vase is attributed to the bird painter and you see also tiny shadows of the bird. It's the bird painter, as in the Metropolitan Museum. But what is also very important, she was published this vase by Münzen und Medaillenarge in 1956 in one of their catalogues. So great provenance and beautiful drawing quality. I have in front of me not a work of art this time, but a document, a historical document of great interest. You have here a brick, probably from a hippocaust, and it shows a brick stamp. The brick stamp here is actually showing a battleship, a Roman battleship, and an inscription, Legio Ital. Now, this is the Prima Lo Legio Italica, one of the oldest legions founded about 60 AD uh, for Italy, and especially Lugdunum Lyon. And then in the Flavian time, this legion, the Italica, which was a mythical legion, was changed into the Danube provinces and, would you believe it, lasted until the 5th century. So this is really one of the mighty old legions from the Roman army, which survived about 500, 400 years. And the battleship is typical because when they were transferred to Moesia and to the Danube provinces, they were responsible for the Danube fleet. On the Danube you had a Roman marine, a fleet, protecting the borders and there are several fortresses along the Danube which were held by this union, by this unit. For example, Tomis at the Black Sea, the place where Ovid was starving miserably. Uh, early on. Now, where did I, where does this brick from, come from? I found this brick under extraordinary circumstances. I was at a, uh, as a symposium in Oxford, walked along High Street and stumbled into an antique shop looking for totally different things like Victoriana 
and among the Victoriana is this brick, most probably coming from some fellow in archaeology or ancient history, probably on his desk, and that's how I bought it. And the discovery is really there, so we have an Oxford provenance. Unfortunately, I don't know whom it belonged beforehand, and it's really a rare historical document for the military history of the Roman Empire, and we're asking for this piece, 8,000 Swiss franc net for export.